Wow, they actually just went and done it. They concluded season four of Charmed in a bit of a Spider-Man No Way Home multiversal way, which was just absolutely wicked. It's just so bittersweet. A season five of Charmed could have been absolutely incredible, but let's unpack everything in this video. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel Livestock Critic. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video we are going to be talking about all the things to do with the fourth season of Charmed, mainly focusing on the final episode which is of course episode 13 and I have to say this season was just really really great and the fact that it's ending is just so bittersweet. I mean of course it's really really sad that the Charmed reboot is ending as I have been a pretty big fan of the Charmed reboot so far but of course it is really great that they ended it in a way that we wanted to see from the beginning of this season which is combining it with the original series. It was so good to see the legendary Halliwell Manor in the final few moments of season four and I have to say season four was actually really really great. More on that later but I do feel like they teased the idea of the multiverse in the first season so it's not like they suddenly made it appear out of nowhere and of course the videotape world was of course from the legendary witch that the lady was referring to was of course Phoebe Halliwell so I think it's really really great how they did kind of earn the right to be able to go to the Halliwell Manor right at the end of this season. Speaking of final seasons, I thought it really did hark back a lot in this episode and in the previous episode as well to the finale of season eight where Piper Halliwell is using time travel to defeat the ultimate power, which is of course Billy and Christy. And they kind of use that a lot to defeat Inara. So I thought it was a really nice nod and throwback back to the original series. And there was a lot of throwbacks actually in season four to the original series, which I thought was really, really great. I did think that they rushed Inara's defeat and she suddenly just wanted to join her former ancient charmed ones and wanting to save the world, even though she was so hellbent on wanting to destroy it. I guess they could have explained that a little bit more in terms of you know her ambition and desire to want to wipe out all of humanity was driven through anger. And all she really wanted was acceptance by her charm sisters. So I guess they kind of did it, but they could have explored it a lot more. But that being said, Inara definitely did have her moment in the previous episode. I thought it was really interesting how Harry is going to maintain and retain his dark powers and Jordan is going to continue and fly in the flag for the White Lighters and he's not only going to help just witches but he's going to want to help all of magical creatures as well which I think is very Jordan but I do feel like Harry had the show progressed maybe he would have acquired new powers in the same way that Leo constantly got new powers for example from being a White Lighter to them being an Elder to them being an Avatar so maybe Harry would have followed in Leo's footsteps and would have become a brand new being in future seasons. And speaking of powers, I thought the powers were so good in this season. I loved all of the evolutions of the three witch sisters. So for example, Maggie, very similar to Rogue's powers from the X-Men in terms of absorbing and mimicking other magical creatures' powers. I thought this was such a good evolution of her power. So for example, Phoebe at one point was able to use her empathy to control other people's powers for herself. And it's really nice that they kind of did that in their own way with the Maggie character. And also Mel, of course, she wanted to stop time like she did in the first couple of seasons, but this time this has evolved into being able to do time traveling, which they definitely did do quite a lot in this season. And of course we have Kayla who is just a brand new character in her own right. And she was able to control and create things through manifestation. I wish that this could have been explored a little bit more, but of course she is a brand new witch and she is learning a lot. And speaking of Kayla, I feel like she definitely had a lot of Paige Matthews energy in terms of being this new, brand new, vivacious, vibrant character. And she just brought so much new energy to the show as a result, but they didn't forget about Macy. I thought that was really, really important. Macy's presence definitely was felt across the entire season. A lot more of a focus, of course, naturally and understandably in the beginning, but they did balance it as the episodes were progressing in terms of not disregarding and forgetting about her, but also at the same time progressing the storylines forwards. And one thing that I really liked about this season is that I felt a lot more horror based and felt very similar actually to the original series, which the second and third season didn't really do as well. And in turn, I feel like it suffered a lot. Whereas in season four, they just really got their mojo back. So for example, like I said, a lot more horror moments, so many deaths, so many people dying, which actually in the original series, a lot of characters did die pretty much in every single episode. They had a really great overarching storyline, which was really, really great. Cliffhangers in pretty much every single episode, which really does draw the desire to want to watch the next episode. But this wasn't reserved only for the final few seconds in each episode. Actually, each episode did have loads of shocking moments as well and loads of sisterly moments as well, 
which they didn't really do that much with Macy, but I feel like they definitely learned a lot of lessons from what they did wrong in seasons two and season three. And I feel like they just improved so much, but at the same time as this, each of the characters did have their own individual storylines as well. I thought the new supporting cast members were really, really great. You can tell that they've evolved a lot since the third season had a lot of restrictions due to the COVID pandemic. This time they had a lot of number of different characters in certain number of scenes, and it really did feel a lot more like the first season did. I love the fact that the Book of Shadows returned, which was so good, such a staple from the first season, of course. And it was really, really great to see it back here. I did miss a Demon of the Week type structure and formula, but that being said, I feel like it was very inspired from the latter run from the original series, especially all of the time traveling, the avatars wanted to create a utopian society. And of course, the death of Macy did hark back to the death of Prue as well. And like I said, you definitely did feel Macy's presence across the season, especially with the Harry character. I felt like that was really, really believable how Harry is wanting to speak to the dead and is wanting to try to speak to Macy, wanting to try and resurrect her. I thought you can really feel his grief and his pain across this season. Of course, you can feel that with Mel and Maggie as well, but I just feel like with Harry, you could really feel it. And in the first couple of episodes, he was so no-nonsense and was really, really aggressive and was just a really different side of the Harry character. As the episodes were progressing and then when he did process his grief, it was the Harry that we all know and love. I absolutely love Harry's arc across this season and Jordan was finally a decent character. I have not been a fan of Jordan at all since he's joined in the second season. However, this time I feel like they finally understood how to use his character properly and the fact that he is their new white lighter, I feel like we did elevate him as well. And finally, him and Maggie's relationship storyline was a lot more interesting. I love how they heavily implied that Phoebe Halliwell is the character that has created this whole videotape space and is somewhat connecting the two worlds and universes together through the multiverse. Of course, multiverse is being spoken about everywhere. All mediums are using it right now. And it's just so wicked that we're finally getting to see it in the Charmed universe. So bittersweet, like I said, that we're not going to see the fifth season as it does sound as if it was going to be really, really interesting. As in the fifth season, they were going to do loads of calls to all of the original actors and actresses. And we would have finally seen an incredible moment of all of these two universes colliding all of the different characters together, maybe some of the villains from the original series would have come back as well. Maybe some of them would have followed these new sisters into their new universe. So really would have connected these two shows together, which could have been so brilliant. I hope in some way, shape or form, we do get some kind of a continuation to this show and somehow get a fifth season as we have done it with Manifest. So maybe we can do it with Charmed as well as it could be so wicked to see these two universes and all these characters finally colliding together in a bit of a multiversal space. And on that point, the fact that we got the Halliwell Manor was just such a nice touch. Absolutely love the fact that these new charm ones entering into the Halliwell Manor is so, so, so iconic. And I love the fact that they ended this season in the way that they always ended the original shows as well, with Prue closing the door. Ah, oh, such a nice touch. I hope one of the networks or broadcasters do pick up this show as the future potential could be so, so, so brilliant. Like I said earlier, I feel like this season as an overall is really, really strong. I feel like it is a lot stronger than the second and third season. Maybe not as strong as the first season as I absolutely love the first season. It would have been nice to have seen their mother in this season at one point as well. It was really cool, that being said though, to see the two dads. And I think the way in which they explained how Kayla was actually part of their sisterhood was really, really great as obviously Macy gave some stem cells, which Kayla was really successful with. So I thought it was a really nice way to actually explain how they are going to interweave this character into the sisterhood. As of course they could have done it as she was another long lost sister in the same way that Macy was. But I guess this is a bit of a new innovative way of doing it. And also it does mean that Macy's DNA in some respects is now in Kayla. So maybe she could get the demon side of her character as well in the same way that Macy had. And it would have been really cool to see what could have happened with this as well. Of course, Kayla's powers could have progressed as well. The future could have been so, so, so bright. But as far as this season is concerned, I'm going to give it a massive 7.5 out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of this season and also what you thought of this ending as well and also what you think could happen in season 5. Let us know all of your thoughts in the comment section below and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.